Morales Flybox. Today we're going to tie a nymph that I like to drift. It's uh, You can fish it as a nymph or a streamer. I like to fish it uh, under an indicator and dead drift it, which seems a little odd, but uh, it works very effectively when fished that way. I tie this on a size 6 Gamakatsu Perfect Gape Hook. And let's go over a uh, and I use a, a copper tungsten bead. So let's go over how we tie it. I start out with the bead and we're gonna apply 10 wraps of .015 lead substitute wire behind the bead. And then we're gonna seat it with that wire. And we're going to start our thread. I'm using Danville Black 210 denier thread. A little bit heavier thread, but it locks everything in place. And we're going to set that lead behind the eye and bind it down. And we're going to wrap our thread back to about to the extent of the flat of that hook. It, it starts to curve just past the point. So you can you can actually wrap it back to right about in line with the barb. And that's about as far as you want to go. About midway probably. If you go much further than that it'll curl your tail too much. The next material you're going to tie in is natural pheasant tail. And you're going to take about 10 to 12 fibers. You want a lot of fibers of this. You want a sizable chunk. And you want it to be from the base, you want it to be long. And you're going to keep the tips even, just naturally even. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure a tail that's about as long as from the eye to where that the barb of the hook. Not very long, you don't want it too long. And you're going to pinch wrap in place at that starting point and then you're gonna bind over that those fibers and you're gonna take them all the way up behind the eye and then work your thread back to the junction of the lead and at this point you're gonna tie in small copper wire I use the the small um, uni wire or ultra wire, and I tie that in on the side, right be right behind the junction. And what that does is it helps uh, helps smooth out that transition right there. And then when I'm at the back of the while I'm at the back of the body, I'm going to form a loop. About a four or five inch loop, a decent size one. I'm going to lock it in place. I'm going to bring my thread up behind the bead as well. And we're going to wax that loop real good. Uh, you can't really over wax this, this particular material. And for the body, we're going to use natural coyote. That's guard hairs and all. It's a full nymph uh, nymph dubbing. You want those long guard hairs. You don't want this to be a smooth body. Uh, you can also use if you can get full length uh, fox squirrel in certain shades. It'll match this, but you want that natural tan of the coyote. And this is a very durable dubbing. The guard hairs are not fragile. They'll spike out and they'll stay tied in. You'll notice that when you start trying to trim it with your scissors. The guard hairs are actually pushed out of the way a little bit. It's a very durable hair. And it makes a very effective dubbing when you want to stay spiky. And I'm going to grab it with my shepherd's hook. Grab that loop. And I'm going to twist it. I'm going to twist this fairly tight and then we're going to wrap 
that body. If uh, you have a little bit of thread at the base of your dubbing loop, like I just did, just work it forward a wrap or two so that uh, when you start your thread's not visible. And you're gonna dub a level body. Negotiate your bobbin. And you're gonna bring that all the way up tight behind the bead. And then tie it off. I'm just gonna give two wraps because I'm gonna bring the wire forward next. next step for this fly is to bring your wire forward. I'm going to counter wrap the wire. Should get an even generally four, four passes. And you're going to bring that up behind the bead as well and tie it off. Flip that off at the base. The next step, you're going to tie in two strands of black ostrich hurl. I even the butts out and then I clip the tips at least an inch back on these. For some reason, ostrich hurl and give you fits with breakage at the tips, but once you get back a good inch of the tips, it'll stay put. And you don't have to be too picky because you're uh, going to add more material. And at this point, you're going to bind, you're going to wrap a dark thorax three turns right behind the bead once more. And I give three wraps behind on this ostrich hurl because ostrich hurl can slip. At this point, we're going to divide our our butt ends. Not to be exact, but eh, try and get it fairly even. There we go. And it doesn't want to separate. If it doesn't want to separate, just use your bodkin or a, or a scissor tip. There you go. To break those fibers loose from the tail. The way they uh, they feather together. And at first I just get I get them swept back and evenly divided. Don't worry about where they're laying. About three wraps. And then I like to sweep them down because that's where they're going to end up in the end. Sweep them all down, give two or three more wraps, and then you're going to apply the last of your material which is Peacock Ice Dub. And usually one pinch of this will do about three quarters of an inch to an inch on your thread, maybe a little bit more. You want about an inch of it is all. Just twist it on your thread. And you're gonna give that sparkle right behind the, the bead. I've got two pieces of coyote there for the camera's sake normally I would just finish the wrap and not worry about them and then whip finish I 
I crowd the bead on this quite a bit. I want it up tight to the bead. And this fly will tend to flip upside down, drift like a jig. But that's not that's not a problem, that's where you want it. Then what I do is I sweep these leg fibers down and you're going to cut them off right even with the hook. And there you have it. The Coyote Ugly. Great little drifting uh, jig pattern, streamer pattern. You can bounce this just like a little mini Klauser or a Crazy Charlie on the bottom. You can dead drift it. You can drift it under an indicator. This is just a great all-purpose large heavy nymph. I also use this fly as my anchor fly quite a bit uh, when I'm fishing a tandem, tandem rig. But a very effective fly. Fishes warm water as well. Smallmouth love this in streams. But uh, it does the best for me under an indicator for trout. The Coyote Ugly. Hope it adds to your box as it has mine. Good luck. See you in the water.